So, Vitali, welcome back to the factory and welcome back to RHQ. Just give me a bit of a catch up on how you're, how you're getting on at the moment. Last time we spoke to you, you were obviously brand new, first day in the team. How's it going? Yeah, like always, um, quite difficult to get here, <laughs> to take three hours to drive. Um, but anyway, finally I'm here and try to come even more often to, you know, because uh, today I meet John Ali and he told me in Wednesday they're playing football with the guys here in the factory. So I asked him why they didn't call to, calling to me. So I hope to to play with them next time. So you're actually going to be part of the KTM F1 team football club? I hope so. This is what I, this is what I tell them. Try to uh, try to call me every time when you go to play. So maybe I can come every time to play with them. Yeah, I think uh, from the beginning is uh, actually nothing changed except uh, we know each other now much closer. And uh, I think every day we, we still finding some positive and good things from uh, the setup and uh, which direction we need to move. Even for not a long time I was spoke today with my engineers and uh, we already again to find uh, which way we need to move and um, so I think everything is go positive uh, every day we try to work harder so I push them quite a lot and uh, same thing they push me on a also so different side but at the moment it looks great We've got some upgrades coming to the car. Um, the team is actually getting stronger. I know for you it must be quite frustrating having come from a faster team, but we are making progress. Are you feeling optimistic about the second half of the season? You know, of course, you always uh, believe and uh, want to have something what is give you some good, uh, you know, performance in the car, like aerodynamics or other things, but. Uh, I spoke today already with, again with engineers and I saw the numbers. It looks really impressive, but uh, you know, all the numbers, what you have in tunnel, it's maybe cannot be real on the racing track, but we still believe we're still uh, working quite hard. And uh, yeah, the first upgrades we will be have in Valencia. So we will be try already some uh, good parts and uh, we will see how they work and uh, then we were waiting for big upgrades in, uh, in, Valle in Silverstone, sorry. Talk to me about Valencia. I know it's, it's one of your favorite places. Why, why do you love it? Uh, I like just Spain. It's not just my favorite place because it was just um, GP2 team. The factory was there. This is why I moved to live in Valencia. And of course I won three times in GP2 on uh, this track. One, it was Ricardo Torma, and twice it was in uh, Valencia Street Circuit. And uh, yeah, it was good memory on this point. And uh, I just like Spain, <laughs> like sea, like beach, like uh, people also, Spanish people is, is good people. <laughs> Talk me through the technical things, so like the track okay. evolution and tires and how you're managing tires. Yeah, first of all, I think P1, P2, it will be very dirty because uh, we don't have any race racing before us. So this track is getting to construction like three to five months. I don't know what that is it. So the few sessions it will be quite dirty. But then, of course, the basic setup it will be um, how car can late brakes. So you need to be quite careful on brake and come to have a good retardation and stop. And also, I think you can, you must to have a good car for attacking the curbs, because I think this is where you can gain some lap time, and probably much uh, that's it, because this track is mainly for hard braking and how you, and how the car responds in in the low speed corners, because we don't have, we have just one, two high speed corner. The second, the third sector, where is, yeah, quite challenging, but that's it. Mainly, it's the braking track. To attack the curbs, it means um, uh, when you take the apex or when you go into the curb, you need to have a good res 
corresponds the k in the curve, for example, uh, when you start to attack the curves, and if the car starts to a little bit nervous on the rear or jumping too much on the front, so it means you cannot hit so so much the curb or so quick the curb. So you need to have a good, you know, maybe soft curve so you can eat, well, like we said, you can eat the curb quite gently and easy, and the car will not change the direction, what is very important. I think this is quite difficult to explain, but what I ca what how I can understand this is like uh, you have the your brakes, rear brakes, yeah, but also you have like special small brakes. It's not we don't have any brakes, but it's you feel like uh, when you start to brake, uh, you need to recharge the battery, and uh, the car braking a little bit more than normal, so it looks like you have extra small brakes with the getting even more uh, braking on the rear tire. So this is why sometimes it's very difficult to make the setup on the curves mapping right because... Um, uh, but now at least we find a way how to do that. And uh, in Canada it was a good improvement forward. So this is why I'm also here to try to analyze better this uh, curves mapping and try to... And we have already ideas what we would like to try in Valencia. Because in the moment today, is this is just main main problem for me in quality and also for the race, because my car is little bit breaking too much, and I'm over the hitting the rear tire, and this is why I'm losing quite a lot of lap time in quality and in the race, and uh, also it's getting increased much more for have a mistake. And that's, I mean, that's something I want to talk about as well, is tyres. How are you finding the tyres? And obviously that affects your rear tyres and then affects how your car performs. But how, are you, how have you been finding? Some drivers have managed to look after their tyres really well and some are really struggling. How are you getting on? I think, yeah, you're right. Uh, to, um, this year, it's really, really tricky to find out how you can push into the tyre, what temperature you need to light you know and uh, for example in also in Canada it was quite uh, difficult to warm up the front tire and the rear tire was getting over the heat so you need to really was uh, a little bit like uh, you know be careful on the rear tire but also at the same time you need to attack the corner to warm up the front so but I think anyway uh, we did it quite well in um, in the race yeah we a little bit uh, was struggling to gain to warm up the front eyes in uh, quali, but uh, I think we find out why and we try to uh, to not repeat uh, some mistakes in quali in Valencia. Spending a lot of time in Russia and you're spending a lot of time in the UK. Where do you go? And what do you do in between apart from train uh, and play football for the team? Some PR stuff, of course, we're doing in between racing. But uh, before I was quite long time was not in the UK because I have problem with my visa and was very difficult, you know, in Russia it's a little bit complicated to make the visa. It's not really complicated, it just takes some time to apply the visa. But uh, I would like to spend more time in the UK because uh, I felt quite good here and um, at least I can also to come to see the team and be contact always with them. And yeah, you training, you play football, you watching TV, you watch uh, the football matches now, and uh, yeah, you. I think you do it normal life, like uh, all the people in the planet. You know, you're not a special something. I think, I, but what I like, I like more activities. I would like to have a little bit more, like uh, football, maybe basketball, maybe to play some different sports. But the problem is that I don't have many friends in the UK. This is why sometimes it's just complicated to organize uh, things. But when I come to Russia, of course, we do some interesting things with the guys and play different uh, interesting sports, sports games. And Tell me about your dogs. My dogs, it's very important for me. And now they're very, very huge. They're just second year. and. Now when I come to, to see them, they're just jumping into me and 
they put me in the floor <laughs> because they are so big you cannot fight with them. And to be, to, sometimes you can see their face how, how, how they are happy to see you and me too. So it was nice to, to come back always home to see them. So I think if no, there's in Russia. I think if I bring them here, they will eat somebody. <laughs> so it's better not to bring, <laughs> because there we have at least some uh, place where they can run, and uh, it not so many people live there, so it's quite. <laughs> but I'm thinking maybe to bring them to the race weekend. <laughs> Are you allowed to bring dogs to a race weekend? I think yes. Why not? It's, it's not. We don't have any pitch, you know, before to come to the paddock. The dogs. Is not allowed, you know. We don't have this, so you can come. Which of the next few races coming up are you most looking forward to in terms of circuit and country? Uh, to be honest, for me, it doesn't matter which country is it and which circuit because I like all of them. And uh, of course, now I'm waiting more for Silverstone and for Valencia because we have some upgrades, and this is really positive. And you can see all the faces in the uh, in, uh, garage when we talk about that and there was really like, you know, wants to come to Valencia and see the restaurant straight away to see these upgrades and how they will work in the car. So I think this is positive things.